Hi everyone, thanks for coming to our talk. Today we're going to be going through some more of what Doc is doing with dev environments, some of the bits he saw in the keynote. Again, I'm Ben, I'm a principal product manager here at Docker. Hello, I'm Guillaume, I'm a software engineer uh, at Docker working uh, for the uh, collaboration team. And I am George Lukic and I'm a staff engineer at Docker and I'm working on the dev environments feature. So I wanted to start with why we've built dev environments and where we've come from today. What Docker has been looking at is what's hard for developers, particularly in the inner loop, that bit where you're creating new value for customers, you're writing your code, building, testing, and ultimately trying to get code in a state that you can ship it to production and know that it's good and it's going to work. One thing we saw was that collaboration, that ability to work together as part of the inner loop was quite hard. And a lot of that was done sort of through the process of doing a pull request and having people work around that. Now Git's an amazing tool, but working around a pull request and just using Git for all of your collaboration to try and help someone and work out what's going on isn't necessarily the best way to, to work. So one of the things we found was that when you're working with Git, you need more than just the, the code. You need the whole application. You need the dependencies you're working with, and you potentially want the other services that app depends upon. And to actually be able to test and debug what someone's using, you really need all of that in that context. We found that people would tend to do those reviews as well, just of the code, but also in the browser, as moving between Git branches and working with Git is quite hard. And how you actually do that isn't always consistent. And the actual consistency of the environment when you're on people's machines, it doesn't always work the way you expect. You want to have the same settings, the same dependencies as everyone and work the same way. And that's just not always the case today. And that's why we looked at doing dev environments. Dev environments provide a local first way for you to interact and work with your changes, with things that are work in progress and encapsulate all of the pieces you need to do that development. Dev environments take your code and all of the dependencies and put that into a single working environment, allowing you to interact with it, develop and do all of that for any branch, any Git repo and in any IDE. We wanted to have something that was kind of automagical and let you just one click and create those environments for all of your team to work with, to collaborate and iterate on. And we wanted to have a way that you could share that with your team again in just one click and do that in a way where we built up from that whole application in a way people are used to and expect today. And that's why we wanted to build all of this on top of Compose. Really what we're looking to do with all of this is try and move that point of collaboration where you're trying to get that feedback and work with other people back into the inner loop, into your creative part of the process so you can collaborate in a creative way and do that in a way that's local first with all of your peers. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Guillaume to have a look at what we've been doing so far. Thanks, Ben. So if you look at my uh, Docker desktop version, you can see there is a new uh, a screen available, uh, the dev environment one. Um, so let's start with dev environment. Um, uh, we, we can uh, go to a Git uh, repository, uh, copy the URL. You can, uh, for, of course, uh, use uh, GitHub, GitLab uh, repository uh, as, you, as you want. And just pass the URL and click on the start button. For you, Docker Desktop will clone uh, your source code inside the volume. Then uh, after that, it will prepare all the environment. They take the language you are using in your repo. If uh, that uh, Docker scan plugin, uh, uh, use Go and then open the IDE for you. We currently using a VS Code uh, a dev container feature. So as you can see, uh, uh, we are running inside a container. I can check that uh, my conf Git configuration is set up for me. And you can see that uh, my account and everything is okay. So I can start coding as usual uh, by uh, create, uh, creating a new branch. Okay, and then I can uh, just build uh, my uh, 
application to see that everything is okay. So Go is downloading uh, the dependency I need to to compile uh, my code uh, and uh, and build the binary. And you can see that there is a bin directory which has been created right there. I can set up the next step during this time. And you can uh, see that I can uh, go to uh, the bin directory and uh, display the help of the command. Um, so just to show you that you are working as usual, uh, you can uh, you can you can develop and change your code as usual. Okay, so uh, if I rebuild the binary and then check the helper, sorry for that. Up, you can see that all my uh, modification uh, are taking account. So that's cool. Um, what we can do also is, um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, I want to show wh what I did to uh, to George, for example. So I can decide to uh, share my work in progress. Uh, uh, via a sharing option. This option will um, take the source code from the volume, copy uh, the source code inside the, uh, the container, then uh, create a new image from this container, and then push this new image to uh, the dedicated uh, repo I just set up. And uh, as you uh, can see in a few minutes, I will uh, get uh, a feedback from uh, the UI, giving me a link that I can share with my uh, teammate. So uh, if we go to the hub, uh, I'm pretty sure we will have, no, not yet. So uh, yeah, of, of course it can take time. Uh, it, it depends of your uh, source code size, uh, the base image, uh, which is using, uh, and of course your bandwidth. So sometimes you can take uh, time to, to share. So if I check in the Docker Hub, you can see that there is a new uh, repo available with the tag. So I can now uh, share with Georgie the link of my work in progress. Georgie, did you receive my uh, current work? And yes, I did. Um, so uh, I took the, the, the tag that uh, Guillaume just gave me and I will just paste it over here so you can see it's a loose demo, DockerCon demo and the tag. Uh, so if I press, if I click on start, uh, this time, uh, Docker desktop will see that this is not a, a Git repository, so it will try to pull the image and uh, start your dev environment and open it uh, inside your IDE. So here it's opening and I can, as Guillaume did uh, earlier, I can build the, the, the project, build the field, right? Um, what you can see here is that uh, when, when Guillaume built the first time, um, Go downloaded all the dependencies, but this time we hit, we didn't have to redownload all the dependencies because uh, everything is bundled inside the, the image that the Guillaume shared with me. Um, you can also see that uh, I am on the same branch. Uh, and if I, if I run the same command that uh, Guillaume ran, dash dash help, uh, I can see that uh, I also have his his changes that, that oops, the changes that he made inside uh, the the main file over here. Uh, and also one last thing I just want to show is uh, Guillaume showed the, his uh, Git configuration earlier. So if I sh if I show it to you also config l. 
uh, you can see that uh, I am now using my credentials and not uh, Guillaume's credentials. So when we bundle, we don't uh, we don't bundle everything. We don't bundle your your grid credentials. Um, right. That's that's for the the sharing. Um, just stop this. And earlier um, we talked a little bit about compose. So I just want to show you also um, how. How do the dev environments uh, work uh, with a compose based application? So we have here a simple uh, application, compose application that's, um, that has three services one uh, back end in Java, uh, front end uh, that's written in React, and a database, uh, a database that's MySQL. Uh, we took this, this repository from, uh, from the awesome compose repository that has. A bunch of great uh, examples of different stacks that you can create uh, with Docker Compose. So this is, if you're using Compose, this is a great, great starting point for um, for writing your your application. So make sure to check to take a look at it and maybe start it. Mm, right. So we took the so we took the example uh, with React, and we the only thing we added is the dot Docker folder, and inside the dot that folder you can see uh, Docker Compose YAML. And this is the YAML that um, that desktop will use uh, when uh, it will try to start your your application. And this is uh, for it's, it's it's the same um, compose file that you would write for any application. So it has uh, a, a database service that's uh, MariaDB. Uh, it has a backend that we built from the from the backend folder, and has a frontend that uh, that's built from the frontend and opens. Port so that you can see <laughs> what you're working on. Uh, so the same as as in the first example, you start with getting the the URL for the um, uh, repository, and if I paste it here, it will start. Uh, it will do the same thing as before: uh, clone inside the volume. Uh, only that this time it will see that this is a compose-based application, so it will build it for you and run it. Right, so it's starting. And if I a new browser, right? Creating the whole stack should be done in a second, right? So we can see um, my stack running here. It has the database, the backend, and the frontend. And if I go to localhost 3000, I should be able to see my application running. Right there. So this is this is a frontend that's calling a backend, and the backend is getting a value from the database and then returning that to the frontend, and the frontend then uh, shows it to you. And now let's say I want to work uh, on one of the parts of the, the stack, let's say the front end, uh, I can click on VS Code and Docker Desktop will now um, replace the current uh, container that's running with your front end code with a new container that has your dev environment inside. Um, and that container also is part of the whole stack, so you can, the, the front end can see the um, the back end and, uh, and and the whole the whole all of the other services in the application right so it opened my my ide now i can go inside the front end and the first thing you do when you start working on something you need to install the dependencies so i'll just try it npm install this should take a little bit of time um i just want to wanted to uh, talk a little bit about what's going on. So, I mean, what, not, not what's going on, but um, when you're when you're working with with compose and, and volumes, um, when you share your code with, from uh, between the host and the, the Docker VM, uh, sometimes you can have um, problems with uh, performance. But here, everything is uh, is inside the volume, so nothing is on the host. So we normally should have a good performance around the file system. And okay, it's done. And so now I can start uh, my application. So, 
I refresh. Let's go over here. So this is this is um, you're you're now developing, and you have everything that you 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 are used to. If I if I go here and change the code and save it, uh, it will automatically refresh, and you can see uh, your changes inside. Uh, right. And that's 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 my demo for the dev environments. Uh, I just want to show one last thing. So we were talking a lot about volumes. So we are cloning code inside the volume, and we are using a bunch of other volumes, like helper volumes, for 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 different things. Uh, so we also decided to create a, a new panel which helps you see your volumes. Uh, you can manage your volumes. You can create new ones. Over here, I can write test and then create. It will create my volume. I can also, of course. Uh, remove it if I want. And the most the most fun thing is also you can go inside and look at what's inside your volume. So this is the, the volume that we created when we cloned the Compose stack. So we can see the front end is here and, and all the source, source code. And this should be available soon in your desktop. And that was my demo. Uh, ben, over to you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Georgie and Guillaume. So what we've just been through is what we're looking at, what we have sort of today in dev environments. The next thing I want to talk about a bit is what the initial release of that's going to look like and sort of a little bit looking at the future. So when, we, when we're looking at the MVP, we're hoping to do a limited release uh, in June that will feature that sort of one-click magic experience that you saw for opening those environments. Um, initially, we were supporting VS Code, and we were supporting that sharing flow for team users of Docker. And we're hoping to release that, as I say, in, in the next few weeks, and we're really excited about that. Guillaume, do you want to talk about what we're looking to do with the, the GA? I think Georgia can do that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's this one is mine. So uh, at, at Docker and also a lot of people, um, we love Compose. So uh, we want to to make sure that Compose is really a first class citizen of their environments, and we want to um, uh, see wh wh where we can go with it. And also all the things that we learn, we will uh, move over to the Compose spec so that it, it can be so that the Compose can also used by everyone for for dev environments and also we really want to be uh, id agnostic so hopefully we will have uh, multiple id support okay and for the volume uh we have a lot of id uh um, that we want to implement um Maybe the first one should be uh, uh, a capability to back up locally uh, your volume. Uh, of course, share your volume uh, through the hub. Uh, and uh, we really want to, to be able to drag and drop a, a file between a volume and your host directly uh, uh, from the Docker desktop UI. So uh, yeah, so, so, so we hope we can uh, uh, provide you this future as soon as possible. Awesome. So that's what we're looking at doing, hopefully in the next few months. But what does that mean Docker's looking at doing? What does this, how does this fit into what Docker's building? What we're looking at doing is trying to find a way to take your, the bit of your development environment today that you have to manually configure or set up between machines, and make that portable between your teams as a Docker workspace. We want to take all of that Linux tooling that you rely on, your dependencies, your uh, images, the volumes you're using, maybe the other tooling you're using, put that all together into a repeatable workspace that people can share and collaborate around and really help you focus your development using that tooling and make it more repeatable. To extend that, we're also looking at how we can do things like connect between Docker desktops to improve that sharing loop, to give you different ways to give people access to and look at the running services that you're working on in that better context, in the application context, or that so you can collaborate in different ways. And with all of that, we're looking at how we can make that shared, backed up and consistent as part of the teams that we have today in Docker. 
and allowing you to do that with everyone you want to work with. And these are some of the ideas you've got. If there's other things you'd like to see us creating these sort of sharing flows around so it's easy to group some of the tooling we're using today, or if you've got other ideas, if that's anything from allowing team members to choose different flavors of Kubernetes and Docker desktop through to anything you think we should be pushing in the UI, let us know, give us that feedback, and we're really happy to, to hear those ideas to look at how we can make Docker the best place for you to collaborate with the rest of your team. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. And... I'll now take any questions anyone has.